good morning students welcome to commutative algebra lectures in this lecture we will see what is meant by module of fraction okay fractions so last class we have uh, seen uh, what is meant by uh, ring of fractions so in a similar way we will see what is meant by module of fractions okay so this is fractions just like how we have constructed s inverse a the same way we can construct s inverse m from a module m so, so start m and a module okay then how we can construct s inverse m that's like and s you take a multiplicatively closed subset of the ring A. So this is multiplicatively closed subset. Then uh, all these forms M by S where M is in M and S is in S. Okay. Then you can check that this S inverse M. Okay. Is S inverse A module. S inverse A module. Why? Uh, what is the map we can have from S inverse A to S inverse M? We should have a map from S inverse M. So you take A by S. Okay. Then you take here say suppose M by you can call it T. How we can send this so that it is an, again an element of S inverse M. Simply A by M because M is an A module. Then you take it here as ST. It is a natural map and one can have with respect to that it will become a S inverse A module. Okay. And uh, last time as we discussed if S is A minus P. Then how we write S inverse A, S inverse A we will write as AP and S inverse M will denote as MP. Okay. So whenever we MP we see then it is understood that it is S inverse M where S is A minus P. P is a prime ideal. Okay. Fine. Now let's have some uh, consequences. You take a map U suppose from M to N where M and N are A modules. So this is a A module homomorphism. Then you, you can talk about S inverse M, right? And S inverse N, where S is a multiplicatively closed subset, right? Uh, so you can have a map S inverse U from S inverse M to S inverse N. And what is that map? One can, they are all natural S inverse U. If you take any element M by uh, S, okay? Then we have to get in a such a way that it is an element of M that you can take off U of U of M that is an element here. So simply sending this to here upon this, right? So you can easily check that whenever this is a homomorphism, then this is also a homomorphism, right? Fine. Now, so you have a map U, right? U is a map from M to N. And if at all you have a map from V from N to P, right? Then you can check that. Uh, you can talk about U composed V or V composed U. Suppose this is a map from M to P. So you can talk about S inverse of V composed U, which is from S inverse M to S inverse P, right? Just like how we are going from M to P, this S inverse V composed U and S inverse V composed with S inverse U. This is also from S inverse M to S inverse P. You can check that they are actually both are equal that means s inverse of v composed u is actually s inverse v composed with s inverse u, right okay fine and now we'll see some properties of this uh, s inverse that means s inverse is exact what is meant by saying that s inverse is exact suppose if you have modules m prime to m m prime to m double prime this is f and this is g suppose this is is exact at m exact at M, then uh, S inverse M prime to S inverse M to S inverse M double prime. Okay, this is also exact at S inverse M, right? This you can uh, what is obviously map. This is S inverse F and this is S inverse G, right? So how we'll show that something is exact? What is meant by showing that this is exact? Means first one is that this composition. Right, that means uh, it is exact at here is same as saying that image of this should be same as kernel of this, right? Okay, for that we use this whatever given information. What is given is that m prime to m, m to m double prime is exact. That shows that, see, see what is our claim? Let me write here what is our claim is that this image, image of S inverse F is same as kernel of S inverse 
G. Right? So that means as sets one is contained in other we have to show. Okay. So one way is obvious because this is X add. So G composed F is 0. We know it. Right. That implies what is S inverse of G composed F is obviously 0. Right. But S inverse of G composed G is same as S inverse G, S inverse F is 0. That says that uh, whenever you operate something here that is 0, that means what you will get here is image of S inverse. Uh, whether I have anything wrong here. So image of S inverse F is contained in kernel of S inverse G. Right. You can easily check that because of this. Okay. So to prove the other way, that means you start from some element uh, M by S in kernel of S inverse G. That means S inverse of G upon M by S is 0. That itself shows that there exists an element, right? This is 0. This is same as G of M upon S is 0. But this is, of course, in S inverse M double prime. So there exists some element in S. Their multiplication is 0. So you simplify that, right? By using G's uh, homomorphism, this is same as G of T of M is 0. So therefore, T of M belongs to kernel of G, but kernel of G is same as image of M. So T of F we can write as F of M prime. So this is small m prime, okay, for small m prime. Therefore, T of M by T of S is same as M by S, which is same as F of M prime by T of S. That shows that it belongs to F inverse of F, right? right? This belongs to S inverse of F, S inverse of F of this, right? Okay. <clears throat> So that is same as saying that M by S belongs to image of this. So therefore, is this exact, right? It is not a difficult one. Now, the other property which we will uh, show is about flatness. For that, what we can observe here is that if M prime is a submodule of M, then we can see that S inverse of M prime is a submodule of S inverse of M. Why? Because we have this, this will become exact because of submodule. That means if you apply the above result, then this is will become exact. That means it will become inclusive. So S inverse M prime, okay, S inverse M prime is a submodule of S inverse M. So whenever M prime is a submodule of M, then you can see that S inverse of M prime is a submodule of S inverse of M, right? Okay. Uh, the simple basic calculations you can see that if N and N are submodules of A. Okay, uh, submodules of uh, M, where M is an A module, okay, then S inverse N plus P is S inverse N plus S inverse P, intersection is this, uh, S inverse M by N is isomorphic S inverse of M modulo S inverse of N, okay, because N is a submodule of M, so S inverse N is a submodule of S inverse M, it makes sense, right? <laughs> uh, proof is very, very basic. See, suppose you want to show that this is equal to this. So if you take n plus p upon s is in s inverse n plus p, right? That means this you can write as n by s plus p by s where this belongs to s inverse s plus s inverse p and conversely you take and multiply by that. So there are all basic things, uh, elementary thing, you can check that, okay? <clears throat> and using the fact that they are submodules, so therefore this is also belongs to here and so, right? Uh, since n is a submodule of m, the third one, you can prove that n to m, m to m modulo n is exact. And S inverse we know is exact. So you can, if you take S inverse here, that is also exact. That shows that this S inverse M, okay, upon S inverse M is isomorphic to S inverse M by M. That proves that third one, okay. We can also give a direct proof of this and show that kernel is S inverse N, right. And you can check that. one. Fine. Now, what we will do here is, if M is an A module, then this S inverse M and S inverse A tensor M, okay, these are actually isomorphic, right? So S inverse A tensor with M is actually S inverse M, okay? Uh, what is the map? It is not at all difficult. S inverse A tensor M to S inverse M, we want to define a map, okay, and uh, show that it is an isomorphism, okay? So F of, how any element look like here is A by S tensor with M, we want to show that it is, uh, make sure that it is an element of S inverse M. So simply define by A M by S, right? Then show that it is 1, 1, on 2 and uniqueness, okay? They are all not at all difficult one. Uh, for, see, first of all, if you want to, uh, when we discuss about module concepts, tensor product, whenever you want to get some map from tensor, obviously what you have to do, 
you define f prime from s inverse a cartesian of s inverse a to m to s inverse a define this map show that it is bilinear okay then show that this f prime is bilinear and it is not a difficult one right so once f prime is a bilinear then there exists a unique unique f right which is from tensor s inverse a so this f from s inverse a tensor m to s inverse m okay then later you show that this f is surjective and also it is one one okay, that we got here right okay now why this f is surjective that means if you take any element m by s right can you give an element here obviously you can take one by s tensor m this is actually mapping to m by s right so it is surjective now to show it is injective suppose f of this equal to 0 then we want to show that this ai upon si tensor mi is 0 right so you can uh, it is not at all difficult you take s is product of si's and ti's are nothing but except that si remaining all s that means say suppose t1 then t1 is s2 s3 s4 and so on right what is t2 s1 then s3 s4 and so on and you can simplify this using that uh, tensor products it is same as this ai tensor with ti upon s tensor mi okay because the s is this one right and you bring this uh, scalars to here and you bring this outside and what you get here is an element of m so f of 1 by s tensor m prime is 0 because any element of this whatever we have seen is of this form you can bring it to this see right here is small m prime. there is small typing mistake okay so f of this 1 upon s tensor m prime is 0 this implies m prime tensor s is equal to 0 so there is a small letter right and use this show that 1 by s m prime is 0 okay <clears throat> fine this is itself is 0 so therefore f is injective and hence it is an isomorphism. so that means s inverse a tensor m is actually isomorphic to s inverse m and using this one you can easily show that s inverse a is a flat flat a module right that means uh, if f maps from m to n be an injective a module homomorphism we want to show that uh, m tensor s inverse a then n tensor s inverse a is injective okay <clears throat> then it will become a uh, flat module right but as f maps from m to n is injective we have s inverse f maps from s inverse m to s inverse n is injective right but s inverse m by just now what we have proved is same as s inverse a tensor m and this is s inverse a tensor m that proves so it correctly simply follows from this previous isomorphism right okay now uh, what we will see the another interesting result is what can you say about s inverse m tensor n one can expect that this is same as s inverse m tensor s inverse n remember this m tensor n is an a module and s inverse m and s inverse n are ten, uh, modules or s inverse a so this tensor product is over s inverse a okay obviously uh, how one can define this is a very uh, basic i mean natural map m upon s tensor n upon t is m tensor n upon st right and in particular if p is prime ideal then m p tensor n p is m tensor n p right okay. that is not a difficult one what you can observe here is that uh, by previous result s inverse of m tensor n is actually isomorphic to because this is over a so this is isomorphic to s inverse a tensor with uh, m tensor n right because m tensor this of course you will get over a here right we want to show that this is same as s inverse m tensor s inverse n so it is enough if we show that these two are s inverse m tensor s inverse n this is over s inverse a if these two are isomorphic then these two will become isomorphic okay so we will define a map from here to here and uh, show that uh, there, is, there is an isomorphism and so on, right so it is showing of this s inverse m tensor s inverse n is isomorphic to this so consider here whenever you want to get a tensor to here so it simply take cartesian product s inverse m to s inverse n so somehow we want to define now a map f prime from s inverse m cartesian with s inverse n to s inverse a tensor with m tensor n so it is obvious you take an element here s inverse m you can write as m by s and s inverse n as some say n upon t we want to define in such a way that it is a member here right so obviously s inverse a 
because s and t so you can write this as s in 1 upon s t right then this is m this is n okay uh, yeah, again it is a natural map you can easily check that it is a linear in here as well as linear here therefore there exists some f from s inverse unique f from s inverse m tensor s inverse n to this with this same term, right now what we want to show we will uh, define the another way and show that f and g are unique uh, means inverse to each other uh, this one has little so we want to define g prime from s inverse a cross m cross n to s inverse m tensor s inverse n so we will define g prime of how any element look like here is a by s m and n okay so how we can define here is we should get an element here right because a is in a and m is here so i can write this as a m upon s then tensor with n okay r you can also define this as this you also define this as m tensor with a times n upon s but you should not define as a m upon s tensor a n upon s uh, that then it cannot become a homomorphism and so on you can easily check that right so you can see this what is motivation and so on fine <clears throat> uh, once you define the map after that what you have to take you check that it is trilinear okay once it is trilinear then uh, the tensor to there it will be having map g and show that they are inverse to each other okay so that is not at all difficult one you can see that this composition they are all very basic the entire idea is how we can define maps how maps are coming from uh, the concept right uh, we can also uh, prove this way simpler proof is that s inverse a tensor s inverse a is actually same as s inverse a right right then you multiply here and use the previous result you will get that but above result is very interesting because <clears throat> we are defining how that g prime on how f prime from f how you are getting f and how you are getting g then they are uh, inverse to each other and so on, right okay so these are all about ring of fractions in next class we will uh, see about what is meant by localization okay so what are some local properties right so we will stop here